Hey uh, YouTube watchers, listeners, and Raspberry Pi hackers, Chris here. I wanted to make one final video here about my Raspberry Pi powered nav chart recorder, whatever you want to call it, navigation computer for my little John boat. Um, I like to do a lot of fishing in a lot of little a lot of the smaller lakes scattered around northern Indiana and uh, I wanted to make a uh, a, uh, I, I want I, I wanted to have an excuse to put a Raspberry Pi in my boat <laughs> so I came up with this idea and one of the things it was born from uh, wanting to have a speedometer in my boat but I thought about one of the other things that I really could gain from this is the is the ability to mark the hidden stumps I cannot tell you how many times I get stuck on a hidden stump on a on a John boat, and when you get stuck on that stump, and you're by yourself, it's a, you're you're sitting on top of a point, you know, a pointed stump, and you're waiting of your gear and you in the boat. It's just damn hard to get off this get off the stump. So I added a uh, a feature called hazard points, and then these are the yellow points here. I just randomly ran a simulation and and uh, added some hazard points there in yellow and then these are waypoints or hot spot points whatever you want to call them if I'm on a if I'm on a spot that I'm catching fish I can I can tap down here set waypoint or set a hazard point and uh, it'll put a marker on there it'll persist those it saves them to a file again over here just to continue, if somebody hasn't seen this before, I got a, I got a uh, Adafruit uh, Ultimate GPS module on a Raspberry Pi 3, running a pretty old version of Raspi, Raspi and Jesse, and um, I got a BMP 180 pressure and air temperature sensor in here as well. It's in a cavity inside here that's insulated from the temperature that the electronics are heating up and there's a couple of vents on the side here the side of the box I got a, a Dallas DS18B20 waterproof temperature that I connect to my transducer for my Humminbird DX my Humminbird DI sonar so I can get the water temperature in here and then there's time and the um, a lot of the smaller lakes that I fish, you know, these these topo maps aren't available for uh, importing into many of the commercial available nav units, like uh, like all of the major players in the in the uh, fisherman sonar market, Lawrence, Garmin, you know, Humminbird, they all have the ability to import maps. Well, none of the maps. None of the lakes that I fish have maps that are uh, importable into those units. So I decided to make my own. And uh, since the DNR in my state has been uh, redoing a lot of the maps for a lot of the lakes in northern Indiana that I like to go to, well, I, you know, there's only a few, but they they did a pretty good job when they superimposed them on Google Earth so I can get match the coordinates up well here's the main screen I'm gonna go on and I add down here's a configuration screen up here at the top it shows the nerd stuff you know um, the uh, CPU frequency temperature etc I have a uh, a Mo power UPS which I'm reading the uh, battery voltage and the backup battery. There's backup batteries inside there, just just for a proper shutdown. And these boxes here are if I want to tweak the maps. I can uh, fire up a keyboard if I want. This is the XVKBD keyboard. That Matchbox keyboard is a piece of shit. That's worthless. That's the best. No, it behaves. The, the the XVK keyboard behaves better than than the other one. 
Oh, I got a little about box here. That is a that is a picture of Potato Creek. Or if, you know, then down here, if I got, if you make changes here, you can save and save them so they persist. And then I got a box here, a window that pops up to uh, manage the waypoints and the hazard points. I'm thinking about changing the word waypoints to hot spots. You know, spots that I want to remember where I'm catching fish. I got check boxes here if I want to remove, see how the waypoints and hazard points have disappeared. If I want to put them back, anything like that, they're back. So the, the the hot spot points are in red, and you can see a little number. And the hazard points are in yellow, and they have a little number. I also in, incorporated a uh, a log, a day log. If I'm going out fishing for the day, I can at the beginning of the day I can hit start log. I have a real time clock module plugged onto the. Uh, Raspberry Pi 3. It'll set the file name to the timestamp and I have a 2 gigabyte thumb drive mounted at boot and up here it tells me how much space is left in the uh, on the 2 gigabyte thumb drive. It'll tell me my current map. It tells me the status of the GPS whether I've locked. Down here it shows my current longitude and latitude and what you don't see is that I'm because I'm not actually on the lake up here in the corner is my boat symbol it's just basically a little square so when I when I'm on Worcester wherever I am you'll see the little square move around and then if I want to hit you know, there's the buttons here for set a waypoint set a hazard hit start if you at the beginning of the day or you let's see at the beginning of the day I hit start log so here, this is what the log file. I, every um, like I said, the timestamp is the uh, the file name is the timestamp. So every ten seconds, it logs all the information that that it's acquiring. I probably put some sort of a playback feature in there. I don't know what value that is in there. It's just the engineer and me thinks that's kind of cool. So I can play back my day when I'm on the lake. And uh, I made it real easy to import new maps. I, didn't, I was going to have it done through the program, but I decided to you just edit a file. There's a, in, there's a .ini file. And uh, that's about it. And I wanted, to, I wanted to throw this out there, so if anybody, if anybody wants the source to this, I'll, I'd be willing to give it away. And uh, I don't want anybody to beat me up too bad on my coding skills, but you know, if you want it, you know, shoot me a private message. But anyway, that's the whole thing. And I'm and I took I have had it out on the boat with me, and it does work very well. And this spot right here, see this little spot right here where this I was really doing well right there. So I haven't had the had it out on the lake yet with these marker abilities yet, but I'm heading out very soon. So that's basically it. You know, I showed these buttons, the about box, and I and this was built with uh, Glade and GTK and um, it's a multi-threaded application. I think there's three threads running. There's three, three threads, and uh, in the uh, top of the box here, you can see uh, I kind of. I bought this. I bought this box from. Uh, it's a polycase. It's it's kind of deep. It's kind of too deep for me. But I, but I I made a really nice mount here. I got a, a gooseneck in in my boat, and then I made a I made a nice mount for it in the boat, which is kind of cool because it fits in really nicely with my Humminbird Di. And overall, I'm really kind of happy with it. It's it's kind of a it was kind of a fun little project, so if anybody else wants to tackle it, shoot me a private message and I'll, I'll give you the source. Signing off. Take care, everyone.